On this week's breaking news, we have 2023 rumors flowing from all aspects of LEGO, and we have a lot of fun things coming to the Skywalker Saga that was revealed on D23. I'm excited to talk about all this stuff, so stick around for the breaking news. But first, I want to talk about a really cool store, a Brick Monarch Shop. This website is designed for all those AFOLs out there that are looking for some great t-shirts with classic logos, some home decor you can put on your walls, such as shields, and some other great iconic aspects from the LEGO history. You can head over to the link in our description for Brick Monarch Shop, and you can get a discount of 10% off using Back to Brick 10. That's Back to Brick 10, the number two. So head over there so you can get some really cool AFOL swag. All right, now let's get to the breaking news. Let go. Let go. Let go. Let go. Breaking news. Breaking hey, news. everybody. Welcome back breaking to Back news. to Brick. I'm your host, Garrett, and this is the podcast where we talk with fellow Aples about their Lego designs, and we get down to the breaking news to talk about all things Lego. I'm really excited to get into this news as we jump into 2023. A little bit of admin here. I've been working on a lot of LEGO commissions. Some are really cool. One will be actually at the World Trade Organization in Geneva in the next couple weeks. And then I'm also working on a really cool one. I don't know if I can talk about yet, but I'll say that it's micro scale and that is my favorite thing to build. And I'm not sure if I said it yet, but for this month's Brick Club, which will be hosted at the end of September, we're doing the Galaxy Explorer, the 90th anniversary set. We're also going to do our gift with purchase, but a little twist. We're going to be doing the collectible minifigure series 23, and we're going to have uh, the ability, if you haven't built a set this month and it's still in the box somewhere in your home, this is the time to build it. Then we'll come together and talk about all that stuff. But, you know, here we talk about the breaking news. And first, just before I do that, my Lego Ideas submission for the Geode is sitting at about 6,600 votes. So we're still slowly climbing to 10,000, but I really need your support. Please send it to your friends and family and just try to get the word out more. If you know anyone that's really interested in um, geodes, then this would be a fun way to help and maybe get them interested in Lego too. So, all right, I'm done rambling. Let's get into the breaking news. But before we jump in, I wanted to apologize for some of the recordings. During most of the recording, there was some very heavy rain from outside and it's hard to... Uh, edit out especially using the microphone on my laptop so I do apologize ahead of time and I hope that you can still get a lot of your breaking news so let's jump in all right let's get focused here well not just on the breaking news but we're going to focus on in focus which is lego's new photograph book this book is catered towards people who love photography and putting a bunch of Lego minifigures all around our world. This book features 50 different photographers taking their pictures all over the world of uh, space and pirates and all the different minifigure characters you can think of just interacting in our world and it's a fun way to shrink yourself down and look at a minifigure scale immersion in our life. We've got character minifigures getting chased by squirrels, uh, getting lost in leaves and mulch and uh, raindrops coming down. So all really fun and a good book if you're interested in the photography side of things. And it comes out on October 4th and it'll cost $35. And it will be found on Amazon. Well, it's time. Rumors for 2023. We're going to kick it off with Star Wars. We have the Slave One Micro Fighter. We also have a 501st Battle Pack. We are looking at a TIE Bomber, which hasn't been released in a very long time. It's going to be about $65. And a bunch of others. We're going to do another set of Brickheads. Uh, the Captain Rex and Commander Cody helmets, which we'll talk about a little later. We're going to have a couple dioramas. I'm very interested to see these two. The Death Star Throne Room diorama and the Endor Speeder Bike Chase diorama. There's going to be UCS, of course. It's going to be $240. It's a $40 increase from the UCSs we're used to, so I'm wondering what it'll be for the first one. That'll be May the 4th next year. And then we also have the Razor Crest coming up, which we'll talk about also. Next up is the LEGO Icon series. We look at two for February of this next year. One is going to be $60 and one is going to be $50. Now, that's all we know. We don't really know what they'll be. It is most likely going to be two of the Botanical series, but what would your guess be? I hope that we see maybe some lilies or, hmm, I don't know. There, there's just maybe another bouquet that's specifically for fall or something like that. I guess we'll have to stay tuned until February to find out. 
Next one's up our Technic. Technic, we have a tipping truck, we have a snow uh, groomer, a firefighter plane, NASCAR, next gen Chevy, uh, Chevrolet Camaro, ZL1, a Ford GT 2022. I'm surprised that they haven't done the Ford Bronco since they did the uh, Land Rover Discovery, which I thought was a really good one. So this could be an opportunity, maybe they'll do that. The Batmobile, the Bat Cycle, that's interesting. I don't think they've done a Technic in the Bat. Uh, Batman series. We have a uh, LR13,000 crawler crane. That's going to be the largest one at $550. And then a uh, Pugent 9X8 hypercar. And you can look that up. I, I can't spell it, but it's um, it looks like it's just like a cockpit of an aircraft on four sets of wheels. And that's the Technic stuff. I'm not a huge Technic fan, but we'll have to stick around and see. I do like the supercars, so maybe I will like that last one. Next up is the Super Mario series. Super Mario has, of course, been expanding its lineup to get into different parts of the game. We've got Luigi's and Mansion, and maybe we'll get some other of the worlds. Maybe uh, get Paper Mario, which would be kind of cool. Maybe some flat styles to it. Um, there's going to be a character pack, and all of these are going to be released in January of next year. The most expensive being $65, and then down from there at the lowest being a $15 pack. So hopefully they keep bringing up the classic Digi Mario and Luigi and Peach. Uh, I wonder who they'll do next because they have a bunch of characters they still haven't done yet, so I guess we'll find out. Final 2023 rumor is the Chinese New Year sets. It is going to be the Year of the Rabbit, and the two sets, one costs $90 and the other costs $130. So at $130, that's the most expensive one yet. And the most uh, anticipated ones that we had before was the um, Ice Rink, which is still on shelves, and I think it's on sale now, which I might have to grab it. It's, it's a great addition to your... Um, your winter village there we go i could find those words and then they also had the chinese um the original one that was the chinese dinner for the festival and i'm wondering what this year's will be do you guys have any guesses send me an email and let's talk about it the lego avatars have broken the mold now they have long legs because they're really tall they're avatars and some people were wondering, well, the Toy Story minifigures had uh, some longer legs. The minifigure for Woody was pretty tall. So we were wondering, did they change up the mold or keep it the same? And it actually is not the same. The holes are a little bit different. They're more, I think, structured. So they took some uh, hints from what they did last time uh, and breaking the mold. So they had to create a new mold, something to uh, make these more, well, I, I guess efficient? I'm not sure. I'm surprised. I'm not surprised. I wonder if they'll ever introduce knees to minifigures. That'd be weird, I think, especially at that long length of a leg. But I think that it's going to be some fun sets, and uh, having an avatar minifigure is just really cool. Now, as we talked about earlier, there's a helmet. The Captain Rex helmet is expected to come out here soon. And it's going to be one of the larger ones. It's going to be 854 pieces, and that's 20 more than the Sith Lord. Uh, also going to be retail for $70. The Commander Cody helmet is also pretty large. It's 788 pieces. Is another pretty large helmet series, and they usually come out in waves of three, so I'm not sure what they're going to do for the third one, but these are larger helmet series. I think that they're trying to get more detailed, so the pieces are becoming... Uh, higher higher count so that you can get those details and have that intricate structure that is needed for some of these helmets that we'll be seeing. Now on the new lighthouse set, there's a robo that's included in it, and it has a name on the back as a sticker, a Lida. And a lot of us assume that Lida was in reference to a Greek mythology. Lida is an uh, Aetolian princess uh, who became the Spartan queen and the mother of Hela Troy. But um, it seems that the designer wasn't going for this. He states that uh, the one has a personal connection to me, but I like to think that it can be an abbreviation of a Lego and Denmark. So I'm guessing it has something to do with his history with Lego and maybe even a fam uh, family or relative's name. So uh, it's interesting because usually it's pretty 
pretty straightforward of what these are going for to represent the iconic model uh, or specifically a number that they talk about, but the designer's just not letting us know. So a few months ago, Lego Ideas came out with the collaboration with Target to have specific ideas set just for their stores. And it came down to a few voted ones and they picked the Viking Village, which I think was dumb because the uh, mini golf was, I think, the best. Anyways, so they're still opening up another contest so you can get your family set built. And you can go over to Lego Ideas and submit your entry. It doesn't close till the 28th of this month, so you still have some time to do that and maybe get your idea set be an exclusive for Target and Lego collaboration. All right, the rumored UCS Razor Crest. It's going to be about 6,200 pieces and come in at a price of $600. Now, I that's I mean about right. It's about 10 cents per piece. Looking to uh, be released for VIPs on October 3rd and then the general public on the 8th. It's going to be an 8 to 10 stud wide cockpit with lots of details in it. Maybe the full chairs going to be displayed with, of course, minifigures and a brick-built blurg, which hopefully can fit inside because that would be fun uh, to carry that along. I love the Razor Crest, and they haven't used it, or they only made the one set, which is Playscale, and I just never really buy Playscale ones. The only one I'm thinking of is the Inquisitor ship because of the detailing. So this will be a purchase for me. I love UCS scale. It's just getting harder and harder just based on, well, price points. So the Lego Skywalker Saga video game has been extremely popular. I haven't played it yet, but I just bought it. So don't worry, I will be playing it because I'm very, very, very excited to do so. And we had some DLC packs that we've gone through already. So we had Mandalorian Season 1 and 2, the Solo Skywalker story, the classic characters, the Trooper pack, the Rogue One a Star Wars story, and the Bad Batch. Now they're expanding on all of that because, well, there's always more Disney properties that we can use for this. Well, I'm saying specifically Star Wars. So upcoming ones are the Star Wars Andor series, the Summer Vacation TV special, which I still haven't watched. I need to do so. The Obi-Wan Kenobi Reva minifigure, which that's cool. I hope that they actually use the Inquisitor Spinning Blade and the Book of Boba Fett and Star Wars Rebels, The Clone Wars, and wow, it's just a lot. And I, you can buy them on your own at, I believe, $3 a pop. Um, and I believe altogether it's $15. I'm not sure. I, I'd have to look at that again. But these are really cool DLCs to add to your collection if you do so. Um, I, I've never done really DLC stuff, just additions onto video games, just like uh, the Forbidden West and things like that. So I'll check them out and get back to and see if I want to buy a couple of these. Another collaboration Lego's been working with is Snap. The company is using a new Snapchat lens to allow people to build different things. and. In London, they're allowing you to use an AR experience to build fairgrounds and roller coaster themed Lego models um, around the London area. And I think that is very creative, especially because they've been doing AR for a bit now and now partnering with companies that are, you know, major players in the AR world is a great idea as in-house takes a lot of work and having a partnership broadens that scope and allows for more in-depth and uh, endeavors that might be far-reaching. So Brick Fanatics put out a interesting article this week talking about a rumor of a monorail return. Now, I am a huge fan of the monorail, and a lot of people are, and there were only two sets that were made into monorail form, and that's a huge travesty because there's so many people that want it to come back, and this is the perfect time with the anniversary. But it seems that we might be getting one, question mark, apparently in the advertisements for a lot of these uh, newer sets that there has been a window in the background with a monorail tr uh, track and possibly uh, a configuration that we could see where it's hanging upside down from the track, which those do exist. I think it's in China more so than anywhere um, but I would appreciate them coming back with something like this because this is just super cool and a great addition to any cityscape instead of just having a train. 
Last week we talked about the poor reviews for LEGO Brawls. Now there's another game coming out, Brick Tales, and it's gotten amazing reviews. It's coming out in October on PlayStation, Xbox, Switch, and PC, and there's these little areas that people can walk through to do puzzles and get um, in different areas. You can build onto it. The Brick Tales is a completely different story. It adds a sandbox mode so you can continue to play, and the announcement from March has just showed that there are so many different aspects and opportunities that make this a really cool puzzle game. And with the real engines, it makes it gorgeous with light whatever, light rays or ray tracing. That's it, ray tracing. If you want to look, you can go on YouTube and look at the trailer for this and maybe add this to your gaming collection. The next idea set to be released is The Office, set 21336. Now this set is uh, coming out on October 1st. It's $120, piece count of 1,164 pieces, and includes 15 minifigures. And it does a lot of callbacks to the, uh, uh, well, the television show, where you can have Michael Scott's office, the reception desk, and a bunch of other little things that are great for all the fans. But in aspect of being a Lego model, it's not great. It is, it's just an office space. It just has a couple walls and a couple desks. Like this is not something super creative. The only reason I think that they did is because we as fans, especially of those of the office would not shut up. This would be like the 18th uh, submission to Lego ideas. So they're just like, fine, this is just gonna be for fan service, we'll sell it. And honestly, it may not be the best model, but because people love the office so much, it probably will sell a lot. And uh, that the Seinfeld one didn't take off because it's a different generation. I think they were shooting a little bit too far back. Uh, Friends was great because it just was a hit series. So The Office is a hit. So this is most likely to sell. I'm I'm gonna have to check it out. I probably won't get it. It's $120. I can spend on something else. Like we talked about the UCS Razor Crest. And I'm not a huge Office fan. Parks and Rec is where I would I'd rather put my money. So maybe I'll just have to build one of those and submit it. And for our last bit of news is Lego Mythica is coming to Legoland Germany. This is going to be their newest section with inside the park. And if you notice that uh, Mythica has like a gate, so it reminds me of like Stargate. But this is going to be their newest area with over 12,000 meters square area. Uh, the park is sometime opening for 2023, early 2023 with a new roller coaster and village area. I have not been to the German Legoland, so maybe I'll have to get out there and see the new land. And that's all the news we have this week. Thank you all for tuning in. I appreciate you stopping by. Make sure to tell your friends about the podcast. I would appreciate them stopping by and learning all about the Lego news we've had this past week. Make sure to follow me on Back to Brick 2. And if you're not subscribed, please do so. You can also leave us a review. Reviews help in getting the podcast recognized by more and more people. So I'd appreciate if you haven't left a review, please do so. Well, that's all I have. So I'll leave you as I always do. Get creative. Get out there and go build something.